What makes the desert so amazing and special to me is there's no place else like it that is so large and so vast and also contains a tremendous amount of biodiversity as well. It would take about 100 years for this to recover, if it recovers at all. An August lightning strike sparked a fire that scorched 43,000 acres in the world's largest Joshua Tree woodland, incinerating thousands of years of habitat within days. This looks like night and day. I mean, huge difference between what's on our left and what's on our right. Right, you can really see what was consumed. The larger, more robust cactus and Mojave yucca and Joshua tree, they were so badly scorched that the living tissue inside them literally boiled. And so most of them have died. The intensity of this fire and its size is pretty unprecedented in our time. And we're very concerned about that. How unprecedented? Well, I'm not aware of any fire since fire has been recorded in this area that was this extensive and this intense. The trees lost in the Mojave Desert were Eastern Joshua trees, one of two types of the iconic species. But it's the Western Joshua tree, which grows across a more limited territory, that's at the center of a conservation fight. The Western Joshua tree was denied federal protections in 2019, but a petition currently under state consideration would give it protections under California's Endangered Species Act. If approved, it would be the first time a plant or animal was added to the list, citing climate change as a main threat. Brendan Cummings authored the petition. If you look at Joshua trees as a single entity, they're spread across four states, pretty wide area. And if you look at the Western species in particular, which is what we have here in Joshua Tree, their fate becomes much more tenuous. And that's for several reasons. One, they occupy some of the hotter areas. Two, much of their habitat is on private land that's not protected from development. And if we don't do anything about our emissions and otherwise intervene, we're likely to lose them in the coming decades. What is the scale of the loss? Even if we could magically freeze climate change at current levels, mm -hmm. we lose half their range. And at business as usual scenarios, we essentially lose all of them. Protecting the Western Joshua tree by classifying it as a threatened species is facing pushback from a surprising opponent, the renewable energy industry. It says the label could make it more difficult for California to meet its goal to have 100% carbon-free energy sources by 2045. The California desert has really high solar insulation or something called solar radiance. And when you look at the solar radiance intensity in the whole planet, the two most intense places are the California desert and North Africa. Our grid capacity needs to be expanded by numbers that are almost unimaginable. We're just at the very leading edge of, of figuring this out. And so to take huge swaths of the desert and set them off limits to solar development now before we really know where they need to go um, isn't appropriate. Some shovel-ready solar projects share land with Western Joshua trees, so industry executives say endangered species protections would throw those projects into question. They also worry about the precedent the listing could set. I think we're in a situation now where we need to rethink how we do renewable energy planning and how we do conservation planning. Everything is being impacted profoundly right now, and I actually think we need to put a pause on, on listing the Joshua tree. The renewable energy companies would argue that, look, all of these species are going to be lost eventually if they aren't able to work quickly to jumpstart these projects. And any sort of onerous permitting might throw off their timelines or would throw off their timelines. So what do you say to that? Obviously, we need to get to 100% renewables as soon as possible. First place we should be doing it is on our rooftops. We need to be covering our parking lots. We need to perhaps be covering our roadways. There's so many places we can build it before we need to put it on intact lands in the desert. So this listing will not block solar projects in the desert, but it'll steer them away from that limited portion of the desert where we currently have Joshua trees. The California Fish and Game Commission will vote on the issue on Tuesday. If approved, the Western Joshua tree will then become a candidate for the endangered species list and get immediate protections under the state's Endangered Species Act as it is studied further. 
The conservationists say that any project that requires the raising of Joshua trees in order to build more renewable energy is doing it wrong. And I understand that that would be something they would say. But the truth is, these projects must get built if we're going to meet our clean energy targets. This is not a state that's in the position to forego bringing new clean energy online. What's at stake is whether we as a society are willing to do what's necessary to, to save an iconic species. It can be a symbol of how we came together and really grapple as a society about what we need to do in the face of climate change.